Sheikh Omar Abdul Rahman, commonly known in the United States as the Blind Sheikh, was a blind Egyptian Muslim leader who served a life sentence at the Federal Medical Center, Butner in Butner, North Carolina, United States, formerly a resident of New York City. Abdul Rahman and nine others were convicted of seditious conspiracy, which requires only that a crime be planned, not that it necessarily be attempted. His prosecution grew out of investigations of the 1993 World Trade Center bombing. Abdul Rahman was accused of being the leader of Al Jamaz Al Islamiyah, also known as the Islamic Group, a militant Islamist movement in Egypt that is considered a terrorist organization by the United States and Egyptian governments. The group was responsible for many acts of violence including the November 1997 Luxor massacre, in which 58 foreign tourists and four Egyptians were killed. Youth Abdul Rahman was born in the city of Al Gamalia, Dagli Governorate, Egypt, on 3 May 1938. He lost his eyesight when he was 10 months old. He studied a braille version of the Quran as a child had it memorized by age 11 and was sent to an Islamic boarding school. He developed an interest in the works of the Islamic radical reformists Ibn Taymiyyah and Said. Qutb. He studied at Cairo University's School of Theology and later earned a doctorate in Tafsir, Quranic Interpretation, from Al-Azhar University in Cairo. Soon after leaving university, Abdul Rahman began preaching against the secular regime of Egyptian President Gamal Abdel Nasser. Family Omar Abdul Rahman had two wives, who bore him ten children, Aisha Hassan Gouda and Aisha Zodi. Imprisonment in Egypt During the 1970s, Abdul Rahman developed close ties with two of Egypt, as most militant organizations. Egyptian Islamic Jihad and al Jamaz al Islamia, the Islamic group. By the 1980s, he had emerged as the leader of al Jamaz al Islamia, although he was still revered by followers of Egyptian Islamic Jihad, which at the time was being led by Iman al Zawari, later to become an al Qaeda principal. Abdul Rahman spent three years in Egyptian jails while awaiting trial on charges of issuing a Fatwa resulting in the 1981 assassination of Anwar Sadat by Egyptian Islamic Jihad. Afghan Mujahedin Although Abdul Rahman was not convicted of conspiracy in the Sadat assassination, he was expelled from Egypt following his acquittal. He made his way to Afghanistan in the mid-1980s, where he contacted his former professor, Abdullah Azam co-founder of Maktab al qadamat Mok, along with Osama bin Laden. Abdul Rahman built a strong rapport with bin Laden during the Soviet war in Afghanistan and, following Osama's murder in 1989, he assumed control of the international jihadist arm of Mok, al-Qaeda. In July 1990, Abdul Rahman traveled to New York City to gain control of Mok, S. Financial and Organizational Infrastructure in the United States Activities in the U.S. If those who have the right to have something are terrorists, then we are terrorists, and we welcome being terrorists. The Quran makes it terrorism among the means to perform jihad in the sake of Allah, which is to terrorize the enemies of God. Abdul Rahman was issued a tourist visa to visit the United States by the Consul of the United States Embassy in Khartoum, Sudan, despite his name being listed on a U.S. State Department terrorist watch list. Abdul Rahman entered the United States in July 1990 via Saudi Arabia, Peshawar, and Sudan. The State Department revoked his tourist visa on 17 November. Abdul Rahman traveled widely in the United States and Canada, despite U.S. support for the Mujahideen in Afghanistan. Abdul Rahman was deeply anti-American, and spoke out against the country. 
He issued a fatwa in the U.S. that declared it lawful to rob banks and kill Jews in the U.S. His sermons condemned Americans as the descendants of apes and pigs who have been feeding from the dining tables of the Zionists, Communists, and Colonialists. Preaching at three mosques in the New York City area, Abdul Rahman was soon surrounded by a core group of devoted followers that include persons who would soon be responsible for the 1993 World Trade Center bombing which took place five weeks into the Bill Clinton administration. One of Abdul Rahman's followers, El Saeed Nosser, was linked to the 1990 Manhattan assassination of Israeli nationalist Rabbi Meir Kahane, founder of the Jewish Defense League. Stephen Emerson's 1994 television documentary Terrorists Among Us, Hey Had in America contains a video of Abdul Rahman in Detroit, calling for jihad against the infidel. In 1993, Egypt suffered a spate of terrorist attacks. In that year, over 1, 100 people in Egypt were either killed or wounded due to terrorist attack. By comparison, the number for the prior year was 322. Abdul Rahman was the spiritual leader of al Jamaz al-Islamiyah, which included the terrorists who were conducting these attacks. Mamdo Beltegui, the head of the State Information Service in Egypt, told the New York Times in the early 1990s, Sheikh Omar Abdul Rahman uses New York as a base. He raises funds and sends money back to Egypt with couriers. He passes on messages to his followers, giving orders about what they should do next and who they should target. We do not understand why the U.S. Authorities have allowed him to enter the country. Quote, the New York Times compared him to the Ayatollah Ruhollah Khomeini. Arrest, conviction and death. After the first World Trade Center bombing in February 1993, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, FBI, began to investigate Abdul Rahman and his followers more closely. An Egyptian informant wearing a listening device for the FBI managed to record Abdul Rahman saying he preferred attacks be concentrated on U.S. military targets, but also stating acts of violence against civilian targets were not illicit. Abdul Rahman began serving his life sentence at the FMC Rochester in Minnesota. It was arranged for the U.S. to transport his body to Egypt for his funeral. Efforts for release In a speech to supporters in Cairo's Tahrir Square on 30 June 2012, Mohamed Morsi briefly mentioned that he would work to free Omar Abdel Rahman, along with other Egyptians who were arrested during the revolution. During the 2013 Inamina's hostage crisis, a Mauritanian news organization reported that the kidnappers had offered to swap American hostages in Algeria for the release of Abdul Rahman and Afia Siddiqui. Legacy Abdul Rahman's imprisonment became a rallying point for Islamic militants around the world, including Al-Qaeda and Osama bin Laden. In 2005, members of Abdul Rahman's legal team, including lawyer Lynn Stewart, were convicted of facilitating communication between Abdul Rahman and members of the terrorist organization al Gamma al-Islamiyah in Egypt. They received long federal prison sentences, based on their violated obligation to keep Abdul Rahman incommunicado while providing him legal counsel. Qasim al Rami, leader of al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, eulogized Abdul Rahman on March 6, his eulogy was critical of the USA.